Hey everybody, Chris Grandy here. It is, what day is today, Monday? And it all seems like it blends into one day. We're four days away, five days away from um, heading back to Boston. Wanted to do an update video because it's been a few weeks since I did one. Uh, last time we did an update, major update on the, on the market with the blog post and everything, I had kind of uh, highlighted and this, by the way, this is just going to be a market update portion. I'm going to do some up, other updated stuff, but market updated portion. By the last time we did uh, did a video like this, or I did an update, I was pointing out this area in the S&P 500. See where I'm drawing these lines? Between this and this fat area right here, right? So I was, I was highlighting that, and I was saying, look, if we drop below here, you know, we could be heading down to like 1800. You know, I mean, and it was pretty obvious. I mean, from a chart pattern, you know, this, if you broke below there, you're definitely going to, more than likely going to get below these low levels. And I said, if we broke above there, that could be a buy signal. Well, we did get above there and it held really well. I mean, once the, the prices of the market got above this white line, we never tested that white line again. It was pretty much, you know, a, a trending upward. And if you notice now, it's starting the last couple of days, it's gotten a little more excited here. And what's been happening internally in the market is it's looking like people are just just can't get enough of stocks. And what's interesting is, as you probably some of you who watch news and things might have seen some you know news reports and things about um, saying you know wow if the economy is not really 100 percent why does the stock market look like 100 percent? I mean this is the S&P we're you know we're just a few percent off the all time high. You would think we're booming and. Say the NASDAQ probably, I didn't look today's numbers, but NASDAQ is at all time highs, the, the QQQs. So you're probably thinking to yourself, geez, is that all we needed for a great stock market was to have a pandemic and some riots? And it's like, yeah, I guess so. Um, you know, it is the formula for, for new all time highs in the market pandemic, riots. So, pandemic, let's just wash out anybody that, you know, might have been reasonable about things and then let's just buy it back up and pop out. So, um, with this, so what I want to talk about today, though, is I'm going to talk a little bit, a little bit of into this, and I also want to just say, you know, what would people do who are wondering what to do right now, uh, depending on how exposed they are to the market, because some people are saying, well, geez, should I put more money into the market here? I'm a little behind, or you know, should I take some money off? I'm pretty heavily invested, and and uh, you know, and this market's gone back up, and I did see it drop down this far, so you know, um, you know, should I take some chips off the table? It's a tough question. I mean, let me tell you where we are right now. Our clients are about 65% invested in things. And I'm okay with that because, you know, we pretty much, you know, we sold out, what is this, February? You know, we were we were out of the market mostly, you know, uh, you know, by about here for the most part. And and then, you know, then what we did was we, you know, we, we loaded up bigger positions in gold. <clears throat> and so we basically had like a... a Initially down here, we probably had about 12% uh, in gold stocks, and and we had some technology exposure and some healthcare technology, but we were maybe 30% invested. And then once we broke out of that little range I showed you about, we got up to about 50, 55% invested. Now we're about 65, and where we increased things were was in commodities and things like that. So now you know, so now we have exposure to a lot of inflation type stuff. Um, and also still have a technology exposure, still have healthcare technology exposure, and still have gold exposure. And we pretty much an active bond exposure. So we're not like in bonds. We have an active bond exposure, sort of a trading exposure to bonds. So we're about 65% in. And, you know, and obviously when you get a market like this, this is telling me that it's, it's it could move a lot higher. We have these, the internals are showing people buying like they're afraid of missing out on something. Now, what you'd be missing out on an all-time highs is definitely an amateur move. So what would I advise somebody? Probably if you're already in, you know, ride this puppy. You know, it looks like, I mean, you know, wait until the market actually tells you um, to get out. I mean, if the market keeps going up and, and it refuses to make any kind of down move, you know, if you have a smaller account, as long as you're dealing with, you know, under a couple of million dollars, you can go to cash in like a day. Like, you could sell everything. It's really large institutions that... You know, if they decide they want to increase cash, it takes them many days to sell out. If you have billions of dollars invested, it takes you many days to sell out of positions. So, 
you know, for them, they may start saying, well, let's ease up here. They may start selling. So you'll hear different things on TV because it depends who's talking to you. The person managing $100 billion probably might start selling a little bit right now, just take a little bit off the table right now just to have some cash because they can sell. You know, with all these people buying, it creates a lot of volume and it's easy to sell into the volume. You know, sort of like if there's a very active real estate market, it's a lot easier to sell than a market where there's, you know, uh, you know, one buyer out there and, and, and very, you know, 10 people selling and one buyer. Not a very active market, but this is very active and allows the big guys to sell. But if you're a small player, you can just keep riding the frenzy. If we, if we enter into a full frenzy mode and, you know, and even back here before the virus thing started, it looked like the market wanted to do a 1999. You all know what a 1999 is, right? I mean, you know, when the NASDAQ doubled in a year and people just couldn't get enough of the excitement. And um, it was also similar to the Nifty 50 in the late 60s, early 70s. So we've, we've done this before. But it looked like it wanted to do that. And then the market crashed from the virus. But it looks like these same people are back again. They just can't get enough. And it's almost like they can't find anything else to put their money into. You know, they can't find a house or a piece of art or something. It's like the only thing they got left is to just overpay for stocks. So we may have that. So if you're in the market, stay in. If you're like we are 65, 35, uh, you know, I might be sneaking into stuff that's down right now for asset allocation purposes. You know, it's different from, you know, trading, investing and asset allocation. You approach different ways. You know, if you're an asset allocator, you you may want to, uh, you know, you, you, you know, if you, you may want to rotate and start buying stuff that's that's been out of favor. You know, like uh, commodities, let me give you an example here. Commodities uh, are just kind of starting to come out of their hole here. So you notice they haven't really come back all the way. This is just a commodity chart. If they want to come back to break even, they got to move up another, you know, 20, 25%. So there's a lot of move here for them in the market. So, you know, we may be adding a little bit to that, you know, and, uh, but for the most part, if you're, let's say you're 65% invested, yeah, I, I would stick to where that is and maybe look for values, look for individual opportunities, but don't try to force it. Like I wouldn't, I don't know if I, unless you're a really skilled trader and you have places where you know how when to sell if things aren't working for you, unless you're a skilled trader, you know, I wouldn't pile in and go 100% invested right here just because it just, it takes a little bit of skill to kind of handle that. It takes a lot of emotional fortitude too, in case we get some, some rough times ahead. You might not stick with the trade because it, it just might get choppy. But again, if you're 65% invested like we are, or you know, 60% invested or 70, I would just hold that there too and be happy with that. Um, you don't always have to ride everything. But if you're 70% invested right now, just be happy. You know, I mean, if you sold out and you were um, a little bit paranoid about the pandemic, and believe me, everybody in every authority figure in the world had you, you know, reasonably scared about everything. It was like, man, you thought. We were going to have a pandemic and, and uh, you know, I mean, when's people, when are people going to go back to restaurants and et cetera? And so it was totally reasonable to be cautious. Um, but, you know, but so if you're out of the market, it's different. But if you're 70% invested, be happy that you've got good exposure, good enough, and just kind of wait and see what happens. Because, I mean, if the market is going to go all the way up to here, it's not going to be for any kind of fundamental reason. And let's just talk about trends right now. I mean, this is an interesting topic. What is going on? So what you have in the market is, you know, right about here. So back here, we had this breakout. Then right about here, you start getting the reports that, hey, you know what? Um, you know, you kind of called through the pandemic data and realized, hey, you know what? It's just, you know, most of the people that have died from this thing, like a vast majority, were, you know, over the age of 80 and had other problems. Yeah, the New York Times, the newspapers love to, like, give you the anecdotal story and, you know, the younger person that that was like, you know, gurgling blood and died a terrible death. I mean, that was like all the news, you know, these these real like, you know, heart throbbing stories. But that was an outlier. I mean, the, the data was that, you know what, most of the people that, that had trouble with this virus are over the age of 80 and had other problems. So people started kind of figuring this out. Some states started opening up and you know what, um, they're like, well, so right about here, investors are saying, well, if we're if we're going to be back to normal by the end of the year or whatever, let me let me buy stocks on what they're going to earn in 2021 or 2022. So people start looking way ahead and they're seeing, you know, they're seeing the restaurant stocks like Cheesecake Factory. You know, oh, hey, it's down here. Cheesecake Factory was a $45 stock. Now it's now it's 19 or 18. Let's buy it. You know, um, 
you know, anything where people completely avoided, they started, re, you know, getting back into it because what was happening during the pandemic was, you know, the technology stocks like Zoom and stuff were shooting up. And so it's like, okay, how much more Zoom do I want to buy? I've got a big chunk of Zoom and how much better can they do? I mean, they can do a lot better, but like, you know, Zoom going up 50% is nice, but if Cheesecake Factory is priced for depression and they get most of their business back, that's a big gain too. So you have you so people are starting to get back into some of these gains. But what's interesting is some of the real trends that have emerged are um is for, for a lot of you that you know, are my clients, your baby boomers, is your generation. And what are you guys doing? At this point, you know, a lot of you move to the city for the life and everything. You're considering selling that city house because you don't want to be locked in during a lockdown. You don't want rioters going past your door. I know, what you, I know how you think. So what, what are a lot, of, a lot of baby boomers doing now? What, what are they looking to buy? Winnebago! That's right. Look at this. Um, we're going to have, I mean, look at, this is amazing. I mean, look at the numbers. Um, Thor came out with their earnings, I think today or yesterday, and they're, they're, they're pointing to much greater times ahead. Look at the stock. Does this look like a tech stock? That's an RV stock, guys. 32 bucks to 114. Nice move, right? People realize, hey, you know what? Um, I'm, you know, I got this big expensive house. You know, we, we're probably near the top of the market. I mean, no, really, they, they probably weren't expecting the stock market to keep moving higher, but even nonetheless, they've made a lot of money in their houses. Why not get it instead of a second house, you know, a fixed second house, why not an RV or why not sell and live in an RV? Then you can go anywhere. You know, there's no lockdown for you if you can drive your home up to a nice uh, park in New Hampshire or something and you don't have crazy people in masks that, you know, should be home telling you to, to, to stay six feet away. You know, they're standing 20 feet away from you. They run over to within three feet and tell you to stay away. These like wacko people. Um, you, know, you can be away from all those folks in your RV. And that's great. So this is what's happening. So one of the trends is there's been a big trend towards recreation. How can I have fun and not get on a plane, not travel around with other people? How can I have fun? How can we just have fun with our family, just me and my wife or something like that? And you see this with other stocks too. I mean, Thor is another, you know, Winnebago, Polaris Industries. You know, these guys, they make the, uh, you know, the, the ski doos and the water cats and stuff like that. So those those uh, water vehicles and snowmobiles and stuff for the military. But, you know, so you've got you know, these companies are, are going to be selling a lot of their stuff. You know, Airstream, all those guys. So that's really a big trend. It's recreation uh, and, and, and you know, recreation where you don't have to deal with other people, etc. So that's where the trends have, been, trends have been going. But make no mistake, I mean, as much as these stocks are coming back, we're, we're not coming back to 100%. So even with the frenzy we have in the market here, and the fact that internally the market is showing, and I don't want to bore you with all the numbers, but from what uh, you know, my internal experts tell me, we have one of these situations where uh, there's a situation where the market is overbought, meaning there's too much buying going on, but it's actually a buy signal because there's just certain things happening where uh, it's so frenzied that people are buying and they're buying. And so, you know, we could really have a strong move here. And at some point, I always felt felt like we needed to have the 1999 of this market, like they had. Like this market had to get it out of its system. We have to have the blow off top. It just, it's just not going to be happy until we do. Pandemic, the hell with it. You know, riots, who cares? Just we got to have a blow off top, you know? And thanks, you know, really what's been underlying all this, the other thing I didn't talk about, which I always rail about, and it's, it gets kind of tiring, but it is very true, is the Federal Reserve. Right about here, they said, listen, we're not going to let, you know, corporate bonds go, go under. So you realize for a lot of these companies, you know, a good 40% of the S&P 500, you know, those 500 companies, I, I want to say, I think I've heard this data, a good 40% of them, um, you know, they, they have, if we had higher interest rates or any kind of problem, and you saw this happen in the oil patch with, with, with the frackers, they can't afford to make their debt payments. So when the Federal Reserve comes in and says, listen, we're going to buy your bonds, you know, you want to you wanna refinance into some cheaper debt. You can't pay those bills, so you're going to refi into cheaper debt and lower the interest rate, even though you don't have the cash flow. The Fed's going to buy it. They're going to they're going to buy up all this stuff. That kind of backstopped any of these companies from going bankrupt. So you pretty much took bankruptcy off the table for most of these companies. You know, so that was a backstop. And so from that point on, you you they throw two trillion into the market, buying, keeping interest rates low, throwing uh, you know backstopping corporate bonds. The ECB doing the same thing. 
I mean, heck, you know, you got to buy stocks again, right? Interest rates are back to zero. You're not going to make any money in bonds. Buy those stocks. They're not, the companies aren't going to go bankrupt. We can start modeling 2022 earnings. Yeah, 2020 this year is going to be a disaster. You know, earnings will be down 50 to 70 percent. Big deal, you know. But because the Fed is going to give us a pass, it's going to give us, you know, a free look this year. We don't have to worry about bankruptcy and all the bad things that could happen. We're going to look out to 2021 and 2022. And a lot of people are saying, well, we're going to have this recovery, so let's buy it. So the Fed throwing $2 trillion at the market in one month. You know, and think of all the, the bailout money, et cetera. The, you know, they're backstopping the, the – uh, I think they, think they offered to backstop the PPP loans. The government borrowing a boatload of money. So, I mean, $2 trillion of, of federal spending and central bank backing. I mean, come on. I mean, it's just it, – it shows you how powerful, you know, printed money is. That it can override a depression. If, if you let them go big enough, the Federal Reserve has never gone this big before. So you have them too. And I mean, that's really the big player, but they give people the confidence to, to roll the roulette wheel here. So in summary, you're in the market, ride this thing as long as it's going to go. All right. That's, that's what you got to do. Um, if you're mostly, you know, if you're 50, 50, 60, 60, 40, 70, 30 in the market, Keep that allocation. I probably wouldn't pile any more on. Just be happy with the gains you're making. You're 60% exposed. There's going to be, you know, if the market moves up 10% more from here, you're going to make a decent enough return for yourself. Stop being greedy. Don't take too much risk in those situations. If you're not invested at all, uh, you know, I would tell the people rotate into the industry, into the areas that are kind of down. I do think an allocation to gold makes sense because have you noticed every Every response to every problem we've had over the last 10 to 15 years has been print more money, borrow more money, print more money. And at some point, and it's already happening. I mean, obviously, look, let's look at gold here. I mean, come on. I mean, let's look at gold. I mean, what, why, why? Let me get to let me get to gold. Sorry. That's the euro, folks. That's not gold. Let me get to gold. I mean, you know, gold, this is one year. But I mean, gold doesn't do this over three years because the government is doing the right thing. Gold is a bet against government sanity. It's a bet against government doing the right thing, okay? It's a bet against the feds. It's a bet against, uh, it's, you know, if you think that the answer to every government's answer to every problem is going to be borrow more money, spend more money, be, you know, just be completely reckless, then you buy gold. And, it's, you know, and, and it's wild cousin silver. You know, gold has a crazy cousin, you know, that, that, that crazy wild lunatic, you know, party animal cousin silver. Same thing. That's what you buy. And that's, you know, you see the market just mar it's just marching higher. And so uh, you definitely have a gold exposure and then slowly rotate into things that are that are down, like commodities, etc. And then maybe, you know, if, it, if it's helpful, you know, start off with a 10 percent allocation to, uh, say, one of those uh, freedom funds or one of those uh, target funds. 10 percent of that and a little bit of exposure to gold, etc. And kind of just see what happens. And you know, add things as as things you know as things progress. You know, add the cheap stuff, um, and then you know, be very slow to add to stocks because this is obviously at some point if we get this blow off top, you know, everybody knows 1999. Everybody also knows what happened in 2000. You know, the 87 percent crash. So just you know, we don't know what's going to happen. The Fed, you know, the Fed's going to print money, but just bottom line is you're fully exposed. Ride this thing. You're mostly exposed. Ride this thing. Don't add to it. If you're have no exposure, start adding around the fringes. But that's what's been going on. That's a little bit about the trends. That's what's happened in the market. Um, that's how exposed we are. And, you know, that's a little bit of a summary. Any questions, let me know. But just this just gives you an idea. I mean, obviously, if you're uh, – last thing I'll finish with is if you're the trading individual stocks type of person, you know, there are definitely some setups. I mean, you can get – there are traps and there are there are good setups. I mean, here's a – this was a trap. I mean, not a trap. I mean, Intel here, it's like, okay, you know, at some point, if you notice this little stair-stepping, step up a stair, step up a stair, step up a stair, see how Intel is doing that, you know, that's that's oftentimes, you know, a, a way you can see sort of an uptrend. You know, you see these to step up the stair, step up the stair, step up the stair. So here's a stair. Okay. Here's a stair. I might try to trade this stock. I, you know, some of you know I do my own trading, kind of not with client stuff, just on my own. Um, individual stocks, etc., very actively, and this is something that I, I, I tried to get into last week and didn't look good to me, so I got out. You know, I felt like on a really strong, you know, on a really strong day, a stock should be up, and if the stock like Intel is down one percent on a day, the market's up over one percent. That just is telling me something that you know maybe they're not so eager to get into a stock like this. But if you're an individual trader, there's always opportunities. Is the point I'm trying to make. But if you're asset allocating and you're in the market. 
you know, to me and you, in your choices, either buy the market or not buy the market. If I were not fully invested, I would not be buying the market right here. It's just it's too much of a broad bet, and it's just the frenzy and the lack of of just sensibility is here. Um, you know, there, there again, there is uh, there are interesting things happening in the real estate market. Very interesting things happening in the RV and uh, recreational market. As I showed you, you know, I showed you Polaris and other recreational vehicle stuff, um, Thor, Winnebago. There's interesting stuff happening there, but I mean, really, a lot of these businesses are not going to be back to 100%. Cheesecake Factory is not. Nordstrom is not. Macy's is not. They're already on the way down there. So a lot of retail is not. Massage parlors are not. You know, a lot, so still a real big chunk of the business, of the, of the economy, is not going to get there. A lot of people are going to be out of work. They're going to have to keep printing and borrowing money. Very bullish for gold, unfortunately. You know, um, but, uh, but generally speaking... You know, this frenzy up here, this is purely emotional. I'm missing out. I got to get in there. The market's going up. I, I didn't, I was out of the market down here. I'm going to, I'm going to desperately buy up here now because I've missed out on so much. I fear I'm going to miss more. Fear of missing out, sort of an acronym, FOMO. That's happening right now. You don't want to get involved with that you know, generically if you don't know what you're doing, okay? If you didn't buy in that little breakout we talked about a few weeks ago or people didn't buy there, then you know, then you didn't buy here. Then you do. You don't go chasing this type of stuff. Okay, so follow the plan. Fully invested, ride it. Mostly invested, ride it. Not invested, get in on the edges. And uh, you know, any questions, let me know. But uh, that's just a market summary I wanted to share with the clients. And hope you guys are having a great day. And please do, if you have questions, drop them down below. That'll allow me to do future videos with where I get an idea where you what you're trying to uh, what you want to know about, etc. And we'll take it from there. Okay, talk to you guys soon.